Greetings one and all, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It is time for the feedback loop. I am so glad to have you along for this ride. Um, we've got a we've got a pretty busy day today. Um, we've got um, we've got Katie in here, we've got Eve in here, we got Charlie in here, and we're gonna take a look at um, really the entire arc. Well, I shouldn't say the entire arc. We don't. We we need like Chelsea in here. She's doing a lot of research work right now. Um, we uh, we're looking at interface. We're looking at project testing, and then we're looking at we're looking at the job hunt. So that you know that's a pretty pretty broad arc of the design experience. So um, let's jump on in. All right. All right, so we're jumping in now and we're taking a look at Katie's um, styles and components exercise. And right away, there's a couple of things that I wanna call attention to. One, Katie, yay, you're starting to use grids. It's less effective up, up here on artifacts one and two um, than it is over here in the actual exercise. I can I can see that you're really trying to get in here and, and utilize the grid and, and stick to alignment. So big step forward there um, we've had problems in the past where things aren't in alignment and I see I see the effort there's there's some question I have up here with this shape but you know let's let's talk about that in a minute because the the bigger thing I want to talk about you know this this is a styles and components exercise and there's a couple there's two issues that we have right now one on the styles front um, your styles that you have created if we go in and look at these they're set in Montserrat, when in fact the goal here was to utilize Muli. Muli is the um, the headline typography and labels and call to actions that are used, and we know that because we come back over here to the exercise, it says it right there. Use Muli, um, and sorry about that typo right there. I will fix that in a bit. Um, but the example uses Muli. And Muli, what is Muli? Muli is a Google font, which means that if you're using Figma, which you are, um, this should be as simple as coming in and saying, oh, okay, well, Muli, it is. And then it changes. Um, this is one of the reasons why I like to use styles, because when I've used styles and I just, and I need to make an adjustment, I just adjust the style and it hits everything. So this is not a huge issue, but it is one that you will want to fix. Um, second uh, on the list, I like the fact that you were able to go through and create, um, use your color picker and pit, pull out the colors for this, um, for this um, um, display um, for this exercise. And now I need to go back and check one thing. Okay. <laughs> I. Uh, we had a we had trouble just a minute ago um, that my screen wasn't showing up, and what I worry is I was clicking around with quick keys just a bit just a moment ago, and I'm wondering if I shut off my screen mid midstream. So um, I've got to be careful about that. Anyway, the the next piece of the puzzle that I want to look at is the components. So we've, we've talked about styles. Now let's talk about components. Um, obviously, you were smart and you create a components page, which is great. Um, I would always focus on keeping my, um, keeping my designs on a um, like standard desktop size. Uh, that way when I, when, you know, when I apply a grid, like I can use the same, I can use the same grid that I'm using on my actual project in the components library um, here you're using a page, like a, like just a, like, um, just a simple tall frame. And because of that, you have no ability to really make use of the grid. The other problem we have here is right now you, you've created, you've basically taken the styles that you've created and you've begun applying them together as individual little components. And that's okay, but that's not the way that we typically want to we don't want to drag each of these little text elements over every time we need them uh, we want to drag it we want to pull these components in as one unit so to do that you know there's a couple of ways we could do this but I'm, what you're gonna find is that we have some other construction issues to look at 
let's start with what you've got though. All right. So we've got a label and I'm just going to make that label the width of this column structure. We've got a heading, right? And then we've got a call to action. That call to action typically is on the bottom. So I'll leave it where it's at. And then we'll pull in this body copy and we'll, we'll drag the body copy over and there it is, right? So we've got this all grouped together. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to highlight it all and I'm going to say make a component, all right? And that's great. We have a component. Now there's a problem with this component and it comes in the form of how it's going to react when I put content into it. Right now, the component doesn't grow or shrink with the content that's being input. Why is that? Well, honestly, it comes down to how the component was created. But what I do know, because I can't go back in time and see how the component was created, uh, what I do know is that if I were to, if I were to draw this component, or actually, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna draw. I'm just gonna use the type type field. Uh, I'm gonna paste that paste that heading in, and now I'm not gonna drag down. Okay, I'm only gonna work on the width. This is important because if I if I set the height manually, which would happen while I was dragging down. It's going to say, oh, well, you, you want that to be that very specific height that you selected. I'm going to do the same thing with body copy, except I'm going to, again, select my text, text uh, tool type, and I'm going to paste that in. Now, body copy, again, I'm going to put right here. I'm going to drag it over. And now, now I'm going to use auto layout, okay? That's the other piece of this puzzle. We didn't have auto layout. In, uh, being used so of course it's not going to react but when we use auto layout what should happen is once we start adding content to this you'll see body copy keeps moving down 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 and that's the and that's what we're going for okay we're going for content that will in fact um, react and change the shape as you go, okay? So let's actually uh, back this train up just a little bit to the point where this was not uh, auto layout. Okay, so this is this is not auto layout at the moment. I'm gonna copy over label. Label is really big, by the way. Um, you know, I, I a moment ago was looking at this. Um, label needs to be all caps, and also right now you've got it set at 24 it should be more like 16 but again you've got a you've got a, a lot of work to do on the styles anyway so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna browbeat that one um, let's come over here let's go get into the, the, here let's um, go ahead and get this down here and let's get that in in the shape we'll um, go ahead and make that all caps too so it just matches the label style and then finally on this call to action, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring it over. Um, you've got that arrow. Um, and really this arrow, this arrow is an important piece of the puzzle um, because if the call to action changes, you want this arrow to kind of push out. So what I would do here is I would actually, I would actually make this auto layout as well. But this is auto layout's gonna work a little differently in that I want I want to be able to say uh, sign up and I want that arrow to maintain its position okay so much like you know much like we we've dictated um, height or we've dictated width on the label heading and body copy I want to I want to leave this call to action uh, untouched so that it will adjust both directions okay um, so with that said, and there's also a lot of this 44 going on. So 44, 44, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I would get rid of it. It's not necessary. Um, I just get rid of 40, that 44 spacing anywhere that it exists because it's, it's going to cause problems. 
All right, so now that we have this, we can, um, it's weird because I, f I feel like this frame should not be there. So I'm gonna drag this out. I'm gonna delete that frame. That frame's not necessary. Um, so now we have these elements. Well, if I could use my keyboard. And now let's make it auto layout. So auto layout is in effect. Um, if we come in and we begin, oh, and the 44 is there still. So let's delete that. Okay. All caps is there as well. I'm not sure why all okay. caps, oh. It's my, I've got it all caps turned on, my bad. But this is now functioning as intended, okay? So with that said, we now have a, a shape that has all your pieces in it that can now be utilized as a component if we bother to make it a component. So this will be text widget. And now when we get it back over to the exercise, you've got something that looks a lot like a lot like our, our text widget right here. So instead of just manually creating that by dragging each individual piece over, you would just go in here and grab text widget. Um, I can come back over here to exercise part three, assets, text widget, drag it over, and there it be. Okay, now you've got content like this that you're having to manually paste in, you know, and now the shape is, the shape is automatically working for you. Okay. That's, this is the way we should be, we should be doing this. Not, not with, um, well, it's gonna be a little large, but So rather than doing the individual shape thing, let's let's create components. Let's create widgets. All right, um, widgets components. I I use those terms interchangeably, and that's a bad habit. I digress. Um, but we've got some work to do on components. We've got some work to do on styles. Let's get that cleaned up, Katie, and then we can move forward here. Okay? Then we can talk about like the rest of the construction. Um, with that, let's move along again. Uh, thanks, Brian, for the earlier alert. Um, we're here looking at Eve's. Um, Eve's got a preference test. And Eve yesterday came came in with a, with a test for maze design. And today she's, she's back with a preference test for Usability Hub. And the key thing to keep in mind is that we have a lot of tools in our toolbox and it's kind of like if you were cooking you wouldn't you I mean, we have many many different like spatulas and spoons and things to work with um different size bowls you don't use like the same kitchen utensil or the same tool in your toolbox for every possible job you have a variety of tools for a reason Eve is using a different tool today for a different type of test than she used for the test that she had yesterday. So let's go ahead and participate here. We're just giving a test here. Uh, we're, te we're testing the test. Okay. So your task below, your task is to choose a meal plan for a larger for a large family that covers most of their weekly meals. Which page better helps you make a decision? So which page better helps you make a decision? All right, so we're, we're uh, the task is to choose a meal plan for a large family that covers most of the weekly meals. Um, so this is says um, large size meals. Each meal serves four great for families or weekly get togethers. All right, let's take a look at the okay, select number of meals per week. Um, it looks like the change here is she's added a, she's added a serving total. So 
This says two meals, three meals, four meals. This one says two meals, eight servings, three meals, 12 servings, four meals, 16 servings. I gotta be honest with you. I, you know, for me, you know, four meals, how big are the meals? Well, it looks like there's 16 servings. And it, it also matches like this. It says large size meals. So each meal serves four. Um, it, I, I almost, the only question I've got, you know, as I look at looking at this is like each meal has four servings, uh, four servings per meal. Um, that would match like what I'm seeing down here. But um, I definitely think this is, this is, you know, more is clearer um, than less in this case. So I'm going to choose this one. And I'm, I'm just going to say um, additional information adds clarity. And off we go. So this is a preview. It will not be saved, so I'm not skewing her test. But what she's really testing there isn't the design or function. She's testing the microcopy. Okay. And microcopy, as we know, it's kind of like the street signs for your project. So as you're migrating through a project, you're really leaning on the microcopy to help you get, help help the person on the other end get to the other side. Usability Hub's great for that. Um, I, I I use Usability Hub for, um, that, that's, that is a preference test, what, what we just went through. It, it's, all, it's also like an A-B test because it's, you know, do you like this one or that one? Um, but I, I definitely think Usability Hub has its, has its merits. Uh, when used properly and that's the proper use for that so eve good job there and then um charlie's in here and he's working on he's really doing prep work for an interview and he's interviewing with this group here i themes and he's he's basically and this is and i and i implore all of you to do something like this when you are when you're being interviewed or, or you're considering working for a company use the product i can't emphasize this enough it is so utterly vital that you stop and utilize the product that's that is public produced or the service whatever it is whoever you're interviewing with if they bother to give you an interview you got to go through and use the product if you aren't already a, a product user. Okay. So sometimes you apply to places and you're like, Hey, they have a job and that looks cool. And I want to apply before you interview, you definitely want to say you've, Hey, I've used the product. Now, now there are certain things that you probably can't use for you know one reason or another, but if it's possible to use the product and at the very least you should be doing research on the product. I consider the best research on the product to be, actually using the product. So uh, Charlie's here and he, he's, um, so as a new user to WordPress, I wouldn't say that. Um, I would say that uh, as a new user, as a new iThemes user, okay? I would, you know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't undercut myself on like, you know, they produce things for WordPress. I wouldn't mention that, hey, uh, haven't used WordPress a lot. I'd just say, hey, you know, I, I, I'm new to iThemes, so I began to develop a website using your basic WordPress tools. Um, and uh, it's, so I'm not here to comment on the functionality of WordPress, but the comparison um, to uh, comparison to using the site, using site hosted through iThemes. Okay. Uh, purchased ho purchase hosting through iThemes. And yes, sometimes to research this stuff, you do have to make a small, minimal uh, pay, purchase to buy access to the thing. You just, you know, most of these things are like freemium or it's like you buy a month of access. Uh, very few things are going to be like, you have to spend several hundred dollars to play the game. So keep that in mind. Um, when adding hosting items to the cart, it appeared I, I need it basic, uh, and freelance functioned as normal in the case of hosting. I wondered whether I needed both. It turns out I, I did not. Uh, maybe selecting a higher level should eliminate one of the l lower levels. So that's that's interesting. So you found you found a bit of a flaw. 
um, that could be confusing for an end user. I think I think these are the types of things that you want to be able to say, yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I gave it a spin, you know, because obviously we're interviewing and I want to make sure that I was familiar with the with the uh, product and I, I noticed some things. Um, that tells them that you're paying attention. That also may, you know, oftentimes what you'll find is that uh, they'll either talk you through it and like say, yeah, that's, we kind of do that be, for this reason or that, or they'll say, yeah, we've been, that's something that's been a sore, sore spot or yeah, the reason for that, like they'll, they'll have a conversation with you, which is a lot richer uh, possible interview than them telling you what the product is. Okay. You, you, it's, not, it's like you already work there when you're talking about the product. So I, I think that's a, that's a really like great way to go about it. Um, so to, to compare, I selected freelance plan and it added both to the cart, which initially implied that I needed both on further investigation. It, it was obvious I did not and the cart acted just like a normal cart, um, uh, like Amazon or others, I purchased $15 plan only. Upon reviewing uh, the plugin for hosting and migration, did I notice WordPress business would be needed? Oh, okay. So the theme I selected for the website was not available on iThemes and the layout of the website. Um, having problems accessing WordPress instance within iThemes, uh, I navigate around the site post-purchase and I'm still receiving ads for purchasing hosting, have to email support to cancel, after struggling to use their WordPress controls to make the site do what I want it to do at this point, I don't think it's something specific to them, but an antiquated version of the editor they're using edit it with WordPress basic, which is the updated editor, um, edit it basic version shows, shows name can't get width or columns to work as expected. Different things work differently within WordPress. So that's very interesting. Um, Charlie, you've, so you're working with the tools, but there, are, you know, the, the, the question I have in, in going through this is, you know, how would you, how would you, how would you, how would you simplify this for, um, for the end user? Like as, as somebody going through and kind of paying attention and taking notes, you're noticing these, these spots where there are problems. Is this a, is this a, a flow issue? Is this a, is this a messaging issue? Um, I think those are the questions that you have to that you have to answer here, and that and again, that's going to that's going to lead to a very interesting conversation. Um, the the key thing is to to remember that you're not aware of the constraints that the team there is up against, um, and I would I would ask questions from that perspective. So I you know I'm certain that that parts of your site are the way they are, or parts of your product are the way they are because of, of uh, decisions that have ma been made long ago. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, I wanna get a better sense of, wanna get a better sense of what it is like to, to work on iThemes and kind of get a better sense of, of how, how the site has come to this point. Um, how, 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 what's the, what are the, um, what's the decision-making process like at iThemes? Um, can you tell me about something that recently has been released um, and like how long, what, what was the release cycle like? Um, did, you know, ask about, you know, pro project management, like, you know, do you work in sprints? Uh, how long are the cycles? Like, there's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of conversation and exploration that can happen now that you've dug in and looked at the site a bit. It gives you it gives you a, a, the ability to to ask uh, nuanced questions. Um, but just uh, be careful not to go too far into the realm of, hey, 
this site's busted. What's going on? Because that, that'll immediately get like guard up. Like, oh, I feel like I'm being attacked. Um, try to be empathetic. I mean, you're a designer. You, we, we know the empathy game well. Um, let's go in. Let's be really empathetic to the plight of the people that are working on the, the product. And then, um, and then hopefully what that will do is that will show that will show to them that hey you're here to help um you are familiar with the product and you're trying to get a better understanding of of why it functions the way it does and if you can do that you got a much better shot of landing the gig all right folks that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of the feedback loop i hope that this has been beneficial and helpful to you it's been helpful to me Thanks, Brian, for riding along. I almost recorded an entire feedback loop, but only looking at my face. That's not great. Because, I mean, I'm handsome and all, but come on. It's not useful. All right, folks. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I will see all of you right back here, right back here again tomorrow for more feedback loops. Take care.